Welcome to my first ever video speaking into a camera vlog situation. So I put out there that I wanted to get into vlogging. Take the next step in what Gemma and I are doing. Take it just from just having an Instagram channel to having a YouTube channel as well. I love all of the messages that I get are so amazing. And I asked the question a few times, uh, what would you guys want to see the most? If you wasn't just going to have just an Instagram channel to watch us on, everyone said make a YouTube channel. So I made a YouTube channel. This is our first ever vlog. I guess you would call it a vlog. We're not sure whether we're going to do it every single day, every now and then, or when we do major things. I asked loads of people and they said basically they wanted to see a Q&A. That was like the most asked thing. So I figured that the best way for us to kind of introduce the vlog would be so that people who just join us now on our adventure can go back to the very start and watch the first ever vlog, which is a Q&A, which will hopefully give you a bit more of an insight into who we are, what we do, um, and what we're looking to do in the future. My questions here um, I asked on Instagram if anyone had questions that they wanted to send through um, what I'll do is I will tag you um, in the video when it's done on Instagram so you can see the answer to your question so the first question on here was from at Dijana Manic. I'm not gonna be able to say some of these at Dijana Dijana Dimanic and she said oh it's a he oh no it's a she she said, how did you just drop everything and start traveling? What did you do before? So before um, we started our Instagram journey, uh, me and Gemma both had office jobs, nine to five office jobs. I actually worked in recruitment um, and she worked in, uh, in a law firm as like a PA person. When we met each other, we were just kind of like so, so into the whole travel thing. We'd never been traveling before. We went on a few holidays, so we went to Rome and Madrid. We started to gain a lot of traction then. I think where people were like, oh my God, like these guys are the new travel couple. They're the new guys that are just traveling the world together. It kind of opened up avenues for us. And we was like, man, this is like, this is crazy. We could actually do something pretty awesome with this. Um, so that was it. We just quit our jobs and we just went. I mean, you have to just do these things in life. Like if you get the chance to do something, don't think about it. Just go for it and just smash it. At Baltzar Bengtsen, how to get brands to contact you. So I found that when me and Gemma first started this journey, when I got to like 6,000 followers, I was already immediately out there trying to find email addresses of resorts and hotels and smaller brands and stuff to try and, you know, get out there and try and, you know, get them to work with me. But nobody wanted to work with us because we didn't have that many followers. So I think that when you get to like, I'd say around 15 to 20,000 followers, that's a good time to, to reach out to uh, smaller brands and just say, here's my press pack, here's what I do, here's what my, my channel is all about, um, and I'd love to work with you guys, how can I get on board? I think that the best thing and the best advice I can give is just grow your account to a stage where brands contact you because you'll get bigger brands that contact you anyway. At Derek Ross Photography said, Hey Stuart, love the Instagram collection. It really captures the awesome side of life. Any tips for keeping that perfect beach hair, even if life pulls you away from the surf and sand for a day? I do have a secret. Um, it's called Gemma. My hair is actually, it's tied up under my hat at the moment. It's a bit messy today. But my hair is really um, straight naturally. If I do go to the beach and the, the, it's really salty, um, then my hair does go a bit wavy, obviously. Um, especially like in Hawaii, we lived in Hawaii for a month um, and my hair went pretty wavy then. We're just sort of like in cities or when we was in LA, New York, um, Las Vegas to an extent as well. Gemma does this thing where I wash my hair and I never wash my hair, but she makes me wash my hair. I wash my hair, she twists it up into long twists, twirls them round into little balls on my head and then puts all these little bands in and I sleep in them and then when I wake up I've got like a giant blonde and brown afro um, and then I just kind of mess it up with a little bit of wax um, and it kind of looks beachified so just try it to see if it works. 
At earn 4 Sinaga said, what did you prepare before traveling to another country for a long time? Not a lot, to be honest. I'm like the most unprepared person. I went to Australia for a month and I didn't even have travel insurance. Gemma prepares everything, man. She prints everything off. She gets my passport ready. Other than taking cameras, GoPros, you know, equipment, stuff like that, then I'm like, bang, I'm straight on it. I will have my whole bag set out exactly where all my camera stuff is. So camera wise, yes, I have everything set out and prepared. Everything else that you should actually have as an adult, I don't, Gemma does for me. That's Lana Du Toit 29 said, what is your favorite beach and your favorite overseas destination? It is uh, Keiki's Beach in North Shore, Hawaii. It's just a dream world in Hawaii anyway, but it's just, it's beautiful um, on that beach, it's amazing. Um, and my favorite overseas destination is actually either Hawaii or Los Angeles. They're both amazing. At Connor Crab, double B with an E on the end, said, what is your occupation? I don't like to be like, I love where I'm at in my life. I absolutely love it. I love what we're doing. I feel so full of life. I feel so full of energy. I love inspiring people. I love all the crazy shit that we do. Like, it's just, I just feel like right now is just an amazing, amazing time in my life. And like, I'm really excited for everything. I'm really positive about everything. I don't really ever think about having an occupation, man. When I, when I quit my job, like my nine to five job, the other year, I just immediately just become just me. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that sounds like a cliche or a sellout. I'm signed to an agency, BMA Artists, um, and I'm signed as a social media influencer. So I guess if I had to have a title, then I guess my title is social media influencer. Um, but I kind of just do whatever I want, whenever I want. At Loose G underscore Lucy said tips on cinematic edits. Um, I use Premiere Pro if anyone's interested. A couple of things. When you're using camera movements, try and use a stabilizer to balance it out, like a free axis gimbal stabilizer. Really smooths out the footage. But when you drop it into Premiere Pro, um, there's a thing called warp stabilizer, which you can drop on there as well. Um, and that will give it like a real smooth transition. And I think that anything that's smooth looks really cinematic anyway. And then once you throw like a LUT over the top of it or do color grading on it, you can make it look really cinematic anyway. Another really good tip, which I actually learned from Taylor Cup Films, Jordan from Taylor Cup Films. When you're shooting stuff, if you want that super smooth slow-mo without it looking jittery, uh, the best way is to shoot in either 60 or 120 frames a second. Then when you put it into Premiere Pro, interpret the footage to 24 frames a second um, and you'll get super slow motion uh, naturally. Hold on. It's my agent. Oh my god, answer! Oh my god, I smashed my phone in Australia and then I jumped in the pool with it whilst it was smashed and I got water in the cracks and that was my iPhone 6. I have to use my iPhone like 4 and look at my fucking screen. It's smashed to shit. And when I press the buttons, nothing works, man. And that was literally my agent. Oh my god, like, I can't do anything. It's not doing anything. I can't press the nut. Oh, I'm saying it's the wrong password. Oh, it's working. Hello. Hey, Katie, how you doing? Um, hold on. Can you hear me? I'm just, uh, I'm actually in the middle of doing a Q&A. <laughs> okay, cheers. Bye. At Nelson Lonnie said, Hi, I really love your account. My big question is, how did you and your girlfriend grow this together so well? It would be really difficult to be a couple and be in such a public platform together. In terms of growing it together, like... <laughs> It's hard to explain, man. Like, I don't know. We just, we just grow the accounts. I don't really know how to answer that. How do you grow it so well? How did you and your girlfriend grow this together so well? I think the best way to describe it is natural and organic. Like, the the people who will come to your account and be like, "Man, this person's got thirty thousand followers. He definitely bought his followers." Like. They, people, they used to piss me off, now it doesn't really bother me that much, I'm just like, whatever, go back to your shit life. 
the reason that it's hard to answer that question is because like it wasn't necessarily hard for us to grow the account it wasn't necessarily easy but it's not really something that we didn't say to each other right let's grow our accounts and get thousands of followers and let's live this amazing lifestyle like it kind of just happened naturally and organically we never set out to kind of do this i wonder if that's a shit answer but oh well. at at olivia underscore pesavento said would you hook up with a fan I'm pretty sure my girlfriend would be quite annoyed. Um, at Tom Doris said, My man, you're killing it with your girl. Me and mine are just about to get into fashion, blogging, just setting everything up. A new camera, new clothes, etc. Just wondering what editing device you use, if that's okay. We love how you guys edit, keep on doing what you're doing. Photoshop, um, lens distortion, Lightroom, Visco at Soy Severine Labonte said, What's the most embarrassing moment of your life so far? Making this video. At Alexa Giles, where is the worst place that you have ever visited? Ever? Maybe like Turkey or somewhere like that. I don't really like those kind of places, man. They're scary. At Luke Parker Hill said, Hey man, I've had a question that I've been wanting to ask someone like you for a very long time. Like, I want to live a life similar to yours and Jay Alvarez. I wanted to know, after high school, where do you begin? Like, what do you do? How do you get started? My advice would be, like, my advice has always been, my life is just all about passions, man. Like, I don't, I don't, I honestly could not give a fuck what anyone thinks of me. I don't care what anyone says about me. I don't, I literally, even people close to me that do it in, like, a fun way. Like, it bounces off of me, man. I don't care about shit like that. It's my motivation, if anything. I guess the the answer to how is to just find that passion and just, you know, streamline focus on it, man. Whatever it is that you want to do. Like, if you want to live that kind of lifestyle, then just focus on it and just do everything in your power to get there, to do it. If it means having more followers, then find new ways to get new followers. If it means going after that, brand that you really want to work with then just keep on it and just keep on all the time like I don't give up on anything I used to all the time in the last sort of five or six years I've just been one of those people that's like a zombie that just sits there at my desk all day just staring at a screen every now and then flicking through Instagram like checking all these guys out there making fucking thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars or pounds a month um, and just living their dreams on beaches and stuff and I just I made excuses like I've never chased anything I got myself to the point where I would build myself up a little bit and then people would say something that was like really negative and it'd get me back down again and I, that's kind of where I lived and then one day I just woke up and I was like, I'm doing this man I quit my job I knew that traveling the world was my biggest passion I knew that Instagram and social media and making something of myself was the the second most important thing and like I know I kind of am arrogant in some senses, but I feel like I've got to deserve it, or because I've, I've had such a shit time, like in times before, um, that that kind of now I've got to the stage where like it's like okay, I don't have to go back to a full time job. Like I make money, I make money on my Instagram. Like I make money off social media. I work with cool brands. I've got an insanely cool global known brand that I'm working with on Friday. Um, in two days time. My life now is just a complete polar opposite to what it used to be and it's because I followed those passions. So I guess the answer to that is if you wanted to live a life similar to that where to begin is just to decide what your passions are and just follow them man and just stick at it and you'll get there. At Alexis Mock one how do you get more followers bro? Here's a little plug for you. I actually run Instagram accounts for people now. I'm very lucky in that this is 100% like an online business for me and it's more of a lifestyle business. It's not like I sell myself as this businessman. I'm not a businessman by any stretch of the imagination, but I fucking know how to grow Instagram accounts. So there's a couple of people that have come to me. Um, I work their Instagram accounts, I grow them. It's 100% organic, it's 100% natural. It is basically, I get into your account with you, you carry on doing the content and the um, the creation of the content, posting whatever you want, whenever you want, and I'm just the man in the background, but I do like 5,000 different pieces of engagement every single day, 
even Sundays, every single day, um, whether that be like thousands of follows or or doing like comments or DMs or like, and it's all within your niche as well. So what happens is you get to the end of the month, you look at your Instagram and you've suddenly got like 1,600 brand new followers um, for that month and they're all from your niche and you're like, man, Stuart Carter's killing it for me. And I'm like, yeah, I know I am. So Alexis, you are actually signed up for me to do that for you this month. You've already started and I'm doing it. This must be an old question. But anyone else that wants to, you can still do it. At Christian underscore CMR said, how did you get to travel the world? What inspires you the most? In terms of how did I get to travel the world, this is one of those questions that like, it always baffles me when people say, man, I could, I'd love to travel the world, but I never could because it's so expensive. Um, I think that like people just need to understand that traveling the world is not like it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, you would have to save up about 20,000 pounds or $20,000. Um, you know, you would have to purchase really expensive plane tickets, pay hundreds and hundreds for actual hotel rooms, um, the food from eating out all the time. Like, it would have cost you thousands and thousands. And I guess that's where the idea that traveling the world is expensive comes from. It's really not. Like, it comes down to what you earn, and what you want to spend your money on. Like for me, my like life and my lifestyle, everything is around like relationships, travel and lifestyle. They're like my three things on my Instagram. So like for me, traveling is like a, a major, it's one of the most important things in my life. So like if I make a little bit of money doing something, then that money doesn't go on like what it does for you guys or not necessarily you guys, but most other people. Most other people have got bills, cars they don't own, petrol, gas, electric, rent, uh, gym memberships, phone bills. I don't have any of those things. So like when I make my money, all of my money goes on travel. And like, you know, you can fly. I'm in London right now and I could get on a plane tomorrow and fly to New York for like £150, which is like $200, which is ridiculous, man. You can do that so super cheap. Um, also, you've got Airbnbs, which some of them are like 200 quid for like five nights or whatever it is. Again, super, super cheap. Um, also, there's ways you can hook up with other people. Um, there's couch surfing, things like that. So like, in terms of answering the question, how do you get to travel the world? My answer is always going to be the same. I just get up and do it. Like, there's, there's nothing stopping me. There's nothing stopping you. You just get up and you just travel. There's, there's nothing else to it. And what inspires me the most? In terms of what inspires me the most, there's two avenues really when it comes to being inspired. The first one is being inspired by people. Like obviously, Jay Alvarez is one of my biggest inspirations. He's the reason I actually started an Instagram channel, um, and I got to meet him and hang out with him for a bit in Santa Monica, that was pretty cool. You know, people like slightly smaller accounts like Alex Hayes, um, Rory Kramer, uh, Zach Kauter, Taylor Cup Films, those sort of people, they're all really, really inspirational to me. Like I follow their accounts, they're, they, you know, the ideas that they have, they're really creative people and they just, they live the life that, that inspired me to kind of be where I'm on my way to at the moment. The second part of that, the second avenue of being inspired is I'm obviously inspired by people on my Instagram channel. I get like probably between 50 and 100 messages a week um, on the DM on my Instagram from people that are like, man, you inspire me so much, you make me want to live my life, like go out there, adventure, explore, do what I want to do. Like. I love that people find my pictures and my captions so engaging and inspiring. So like all of that kind of stuff, like when I read it back, it really inspires me to do it more. Um, so they're my main inspirations. Um, at Dallas Y said, what's your favorite part about traveling? My favorite part about traveling is probably the freedom to just do whatever we want to do every single day. If we want to wake up at 11 in the morning and eat pizza for breakfast and then eat donuts for dinner we can you know if we want to go on like a massive adventure through hiking through the jungles in hawaii then we can if we want to just lay on the beach at night time on, on venice beach not that you'd want to do that with some of the crazies that are around there but anywhere else in the world we can do whatever we want and like that's the most amazing part for me hey guys so i have to go because 
the big event thing. Oh God. So the big event thing that uh, me and Gemma have got coming up on Friday, which is actually like the biggest thing with the biggest brand that we've worked with since we've been doing this Instagram thing. And I'm so pumped for everyone to see it afterwards. But I really have to go back inside because I've got so many documents and PDFs to sign and send them back to my agent before, uh, before about half an hour ago. So I need to go and get on that. But hopefully I'll put this video together. Hopefully you enjoyed it. 100% definitely see you guys again because I actually kind of like vlogging. It's nice to just get stuff out in here. I really need to go.